the top 10 key codes and conventions for music videos. I uh, have a list well, of the top 10. The first one would be the lip syncing because um, this has a massive effect on uh, how the performance is done. I feel it um, adds more emphasis on the performance, whether it be a performance or narrative. I feel that at number nine, which links in with the lip syncing, is the performance and narrative because um, I feel if you incorporate both, uh, it gives it a bit of an edge. And nowadays, more and more of the music videos brought out are or have uh, an equal share of both. At number eight, I've got the editing of the music videos where I use special effects and sort of things like that to enhance again the visuals and uh, it increases the aesthetics of the performance. Number seven I've got pace and continue continuity. Uh, key pace, you know, slowing down at the chorus, picking it up again tends to swing about on what the song is, so it all flows into one, it is continuous. So that's at number seven. Number six, I've got the genre. Yeah, it plays a key part in that, whether it be more R&B nowadays, which we get into, or pop and rock, or whatever whatever it is. It just has to fit in with what's going on. You can't have a flowery, flowery setting with a with a, a rock song because it just won't work. You've got to get the right, the right sort of things to fit with the genre. In at five would probably be a star performer. So you usually have your your lead singer of the band in uh, most of the frames and at the front, which is usually center, centered during the uh, the shoot. So uh, yeah, most of the camera shots are on him or her in some cases. Uh, I just I think that this this is a also a very very big part whether it be a band performance or a solo artist again you have to you have to really pick up on the key parts and who and what shots you have to select when filming this at number four at number four have the uh, the settings which i've uh, previously mentioned before but um yeah i think this this plays a massive part as it doesn't really have anything else to do with the the choice of the song, but the setting is key when it comes down to the preferred reading that the reader or the viewers get when watching the music video, and if they want to watch it over and over again, then it has to be very intriguing and makes them want to question it and to go back and look at it. Number three, the uh, mise en scene. This. This is also like the setting, whereas it has to be spot on. You can't have any random things going on unless the, the song is a bit random in itself. Um, for the music video to be successful with the mise-en-scene, it uh, has to play key parts where you pick up on bits as a viewer that stand out in the, uh, in the uh, music video, such as maybe an iconic costume or a, or a poster on the wall, or something that really grasps the reader's attention. Number two, I have got in costumes in the show. So, for example, like the iconic costumes that Daft Punk wear with the um, masks. These sometimes do play a key part when uh, when it comes to the music videos, as sometimes it can define a band on who they're watching, for example, Daft Punk. So I feel that they, once again, have to be taken into consideration when planning a music video. And finally, the last one that I've got is the audience. Does the music video show any fans and audience in, in it? So does that help at all with the performance and aesthetically please? Look out outlook to it. I uh, I genuinely think that sometimes it enhances the performance. For example, with the, the "Don't You Worry Child" song by uh, Swedish House Mafia, that really does enhance 
the music video with the audience in there and I think when looking at doing my own video myself I have to think of things like that that would bump up the amount of accuracy and level of sort of creativity that I have to put into mind to make it work.